Hey, I haven't used this channel for anything in a while, and I used to do book reviews on my old channel, and I would just like talking to the camera, but I decided for this one I'd just use my voice and show an image and see how that works. Um, I don't really feel like talking to a camera right now, so I'll just talk and talk about Bleeding Edge, this new Thomas Pynchon novel. It came out in September of 2013, and uh, I finished it about a week ago, and I just I've had a few thoughts about it, and I thought I'd share them with you and give my opinion of this book. Before I go into that, I should say that I've um, I've read quite a bit of Pynchon. I've read pretty much all of his novels, um, and also that collection of short stories, Slow Learner. So I'm, I'm not new to Pynchon. I'm well acquainted with his style and his technique, and I feel like I he's one of my favorite prose authors. So. I, I kind of went in a little biased, so don't think I'm just like reading this cold. And um, I would say, having read this now, that it's it's one of his more accessible novels, but it's still it's it it's borders on the the things that make Pynchon difficult. It does have the, some of those elements that do make him challenging, but um, it is it's slightly more accessible than some books like Gravity's Rainbow or um, Mason and Dixon or uh, against the day, but it's still, uh, it's still is, is easier to follow than, than those books, but it's, it's more difficult. If you want like the most accessible pension, I would recommend Inherent Vice and The Crying of Lot 49. I think those books are much easier to kind of get your head around, although they also have some of the kind of the themes that pension is known for, the kind of the ambiguous paranoia and that kind of uh, these giant systems that are working against the individual. I think those capture those that really well, and uh, those are better places to start than this book. That being said, um, I also feel that this book was uh, probably my least favorite of the Pynchon novels that I've read, and I've read them all. So, like, yeah, I would say this is probably my least favorite for... Um, I'm, I have a few different reasons, but... Uh, I would say that it's mainly because I feel like it doesn't, how do I explain this? It doesn't really, uh, it just doesn't work. It feels like everything is kind of laid out flat and it doesn't really have that interesting conflict, that that battle against these unknown forces that, that you feel in his other books. Here I feel it's like there's this woman, she's investigating this dot-com billionaire and his possible connections to 9-11, but I feel like it's just like everything's laid out flat, and it's, I, I feel like we kind of got this in Inherent Vice that Pynchon was kind of writing something that's a little more mainstream so that he can maybe get some mainstream readers, but I feel like in this this book, in Inherent Vice, I think it works, and I, I like Inherent Vice quite a bit, but I feel like this book, it doesn't work as well. I feel like it's it's a little more, um, maybe dumbed down is the, is the word, but I don't know. That being said, there are quite a, there's, there's a lot of good stuff in the book. Um, there, there are some beautiful passages, there's some good writing, but it does have some, some flaws, certainly. I think of Pynchon kind of as a historical novelist, so I was curious to read this because it takes place so recently. It's set in, uh, just, in 2001, just before 9-11 is when it begins, and it covers 9-11 and includes 9-11. And it was kind of interesting to see that, because I'm pretty sure Pynchon was living in New York at the time. <clears throat> so it feels kind of autobiographical in that sense, just like a lot of his other books, you feel like he may have been living in the areas um, that some of those books talk about. Like, for example, uh, The Crying of Lot 49 and Vineland, I feel like those are very, like Pynchon was in California at the time, or at least thinking about California and his experiences there when he wrote those books. So I feel like we do kind of get his perspective on 9-11, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think of Pynchon as being funny, like a lot of people don't mention this, but he does have a really good humor. And in the other books, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's a little more subtle. And I feel like in this book, the humor was a little too manifest, just like with the paranoia, like things are spelled out a little too loudly. One of the criticisms that I see a lot about Pynchon, or at least it seems like one of his major flaws, or if, you, if you're willing to stick with it, it's, maybe it's not a flaw, but he does tend to have a lot of characters in his books. And this book is, it's not as many as some of his books, but it still does have quite a large cast. And 
it wouldn't be a problem like you know some other authors like charles dickens can have a lot of characters too but i feel like pynchon doesn't always uh describe his characters as clearly as they could be and that that certainly makes him a challenge i've also looked at the amazon reviews for this book and it's kind of unfortunate that amazon has for some reason linked the reviews for the audiobook and the the textbook because the audiobook seems to be universally hated for its reader um the woman she's she has kind of like a like the the character in the book she has like a jewish uh female older voice that uh people seem to loathe and think is a bad choice for the audiobook i haven't listened to the audiobook too much i just kind of listened to a sample and i'm i probably wouldn't listen to it cuz it it w didn't really appeal to me but um it's kind of unfortunate that amazon linked those two and didn't separate them but um, overall, I would say I don't recommend this for new pension readers. I would recommend this if you've read um, maybe other all the other pension books and you are a pension fan, then yeah, definitely check it out. It has things going for it. Um, like I said before, I think Crying of Lot 49 and Inherent Vice are much more accessible. And then I would probably say this book and then maybe, uh, maybe Vineland and then V and then Gravity's Rainbow, Mason Dixon, Mason and Dixon, and um, Against the Day. Those those last three are probably the most difficult that I wouldn't recommend unless you have a lot of patience. But um, I do enjoy Pynchon, and I'm glad he wrote a new book, and I'm glad he seems to be active, even though he's uh, an older writer, but he still definitely has some talent, and I just feel that this, maybe this character's or... I think I didn't care for the characters a lot because they were just kind of these like um, upper middle class New Yorkers that, I don't know, it just didn't feel like characters that I could relate to. Maybe if you live in New York, maybe you'll enjoy it more. But uh, So I would probably give this, uh, in terms of a grade, maybe a, a B minus or a C plus.